Psalm 103 and 8. But I want to talk tonight. You know, I heard, you know, pastor hears a lot of things through the grapevine. And I heard a statement was made Saturday that that what we did Saturday better be worth it. Someone in a spirit of anger said, well, it better be worth it. Well, guess what? It was. It was. It was. I don't care if there was one child came through. I don't care if one person got a thing of popcorn. It was worth it. And I'm going to tell you, we're already looking for next year. I, if the reception was as good as it was this year, imagine what it's going to be next year. Think about what I'm saying. But that's signs, and I'm going to say this tonight because I'm going to talk about this. That is signs of an immature Christian. Mm-hmm. Because the thing I want to share with you tonight, how are, what are the ten signs people are not mature Christians? I'm not going to go through all of them tonight. Because this is Wednesday night power hour. Our kids are back in school. I have heard some things about schools shutting down pretty soon. Especially in Yakin County. If Yakin County does not get the COVID numbers under control, they're shutting the schools down. And they're going to go back to remote learning. But look tonight, and like I said, we're doing this for an hour because I see we got cookie cakes over there. And I think I see some other cookies over there. And, you know, it is a special day, you know. Should be a national holiday. But anyway, well, we can have more national holidays. Hey, it's birthday week for some of us. Hallelujah. My daughter, I got to tell you all this. I know this is going to be on our YouTube channel, and I really I really don't care. But my daughter, we were sitting at the table. I was trying to finish some documentation tonight. I didn't get done with work till 637, so. And I was sitting at the table trying to get my IDG notes. For some of you that don't know what that is, if you're in health care, it's your notes we have to do for our patients. Gosh, it took a while. So I was sitting there, and I, Madison has no filter, okay. So a, a person was in our home, because this is on YouTube. So a person was in our home, and Alice was talking about my birthday and, and all that we'd got for my birthday. Out Madison, without batting an eye, says, the church got daddy a tattoo. And oh my gosh, I was sitting there and I was like, that's my baby right there. <laughs> you know, and it, it's healing, it's healing good and I can't wait till it, till it continues to heal and get this one. And, but the thing was, when she said that, I was sitting here, oh my gosh. And if I wanted to say it didn't come out of the church treasury, I promise you, the people paid for it. So, so what are the signs of the immature Christian? And in Psalm 103 and 8, well, this is the reason why we're going to build this, and I'm going to try to do, we got, we got just about 35 minutes. So I want to teach this because next Sunday, this teaching goes with the teaching on Sunday because I feel like we need to understand it. You know, the Bible tells us, I'll go here real quick before I want to get the scripture out. In Psalm 103 and 8, this is the main text of the scripture. The Lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. Now, the Lord is merciful. He's forgiven. Mm -hmm. And gracious. The Bible says he loads us up with benefits daily. He's slow to anger. That's a big one. And he's always abounding in mercy. The Bible says a righteous man or woman shall fall seven times, but they'll rise again. Now, when you look at the signs of an immature Christian, here's a sign that you've got some growth. And I'm just going to put it here. You all know what the teaching is tonight. Number one, you are quick to anger. Have you ever heard somebody make the statement, you better not, tell, better not say that or better not do that because you know, they'll go off, go off like a, a piece of dynamite. They're, they're quick to anger. You know what you call a person that's always complaining, always angry at work, unemployed. So you're quick to anger. It doesn't matter what's going on. You're always, how many of you can honestly be honest with me? You know people that is always angry. If they was to smile, it'd break their face. I'm going to try to keep rap, but 
rat's butt out of my teaching tonight because I believe I used it about 10 times Sunday. So, but there, <laughs> I was listening to it, rat butt right there. Who gives a rat's butt? But anyway, I was like, I better not be saying that all that. But they're, they're the type of person that if they smile, it breaks their faith. They're always angry. It don't matter. God could be good to them, and they'd still find something to be angry about. But a person that is quick to anger, is, a, is a, there's a sure sell, tell sign that they are an immature Christian. Think about this. If, God's, if God can be gracious and compassionate and slow to anger in light of all of our sins, then we should too. You are quick to anger. I don't know about you, but I don't like being around them type of people. I don't like being around somebody that you're so scared. If you say the wrong thing, they're going to go off. Am I talking to this church? And especially, and the sad thing is, is you find that nine out of ten times in the place called church. Better not sit in her seat. Better not cross them the wrong way. Better not do this. Better not do that. But they're always quick to anger. You know I'm telling the truth. There is people, and I hate to say this, but there are people in your life that is waiting for you to make them angry so they can go off on you. You know, this too, with the day being my birthday and things, I, every time something would pop up, that somebody would send something, I usually don't get on Facebook, but I fixed it to where I could today. And every time somebody sent me something, I, po- I, I wanted to say thank you and I love you and things like that. But I found out today where blood stands that's all i'm gonna say about that but the thing is this but it didn't make me angry it just gave me confirmation Mm -hmm. because when the word of prophecy was spoken over me years ago and yeah i'm speaking this on our corcc tv the word of prophecy was spoken over me when i announced my calling to preach at 16 years old the man of God walked up to me and said, remember Joseph, the man with a coat of many colors. Have you ever studied that scripture? His family threw him in the pit, but God placed him in the palace. Y'all, <laughs> y'all should have shouted. His family left him for dead, but God said, no, he's going to be alive. Matter of fact, if you remember, he sat at the king's table. He was the king's main man. When the famine came across the, in the earth, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the region, he was the one that was distributing him the food. I didn't understand the significance of that. But if Jesus Christ himself said, who is my mother, who is my brother? If your family turns their back on you for your Christian stance, give God glory. But see, you don't get angry, you should get excited. Because the Bible tells us there's going to be people. There is people that are waiting to see you fail. There is people. How many times have you ever had somebody call? And I'm just going to be real with you. You ever had somebody call? They're just fussing. Man, they are raising hell. That's the best way to put it. And you're sitting there listening to it because you're scared to to, uh, to hit the uh, stop button. Anybody ever done that? Just keep listening to them cuss and fuss and all this. Uh Uh-uh. Hit that end button. Cut your phone on silent. And get it as far away from you. Because as long as, you, how many of you know, well, better answers, they're going to quit calling. Well, gosh, next time they stop calling, hit that button that cuts your phone off. But people are quick to anger. See, figure out, now catch this. If you want to be a successful, mature Christian, figure out what is, the tr- what is triggering your anger and work to get rid of it or them. What triggers my anger? What is it in my life that causes, when I think about it, it makes me angry? When I see them, uh uh-huh, they make me angry. When I hear their name mentioned, it makes me angry. When I see this happen, it makes me angry. A child of God, I love you when I say this, a child of God don't get angry. See, the Bible says, now catch this, be angry and sin not. Being angry can be, you can, ha- you can be angry all you want to in this flesh, outside, inside this body, but don't release it to the, to the foul of the air. You can be angry in your spirit, 
but don't let it reflect in your natural. Come on now, somebody. Because there's somebody that is waiting for you to mess up so you can be that stumbling block that they can say, hey, I don't go to church because of that hypocrite. But you got to be quick. You're, when, you're, when you're a mere mature Christian, you're quick to anger. Number two, and this is big. If you don't believe me, this is why most people quit a job. You are, you are sensitive to correction. And see, here's what's so funny when I put this one down. People take correction as you saying they don't know what they're doing. People should take correction as what do, what do you see that can make me better? Mm-hmm. See, you're sensitive to, to correction. You don't, you don't want to be corrected. You would rather do it wrong than somebody to help you to make it right. I mean, I'll be straight up with you. I'm not a mechanic. Don't ask me to fix your car. No, I don't. I'll fix your spirit, let your daddy fix the car. Hallelujah. I can do the spirit thing. But the thing is, you're sensitive to correction. Because the Bible says that you train up a child when they go, where, train up a child when they should go when they will not depart from it. We think that's just parenting. But that's also spiritually the pastor to the young sheep, to the kid, if you will. But you've got to be sensitive to correction. You've got to know. I'm going to tell you something. I'm one of these type of people. I have learned 47 years of living. If I'm doing it wrong, please tell me so I can fix it. I tell the Holy Spirit every day when I'm praying, you know, because the Holy Spirit lives within you. Jesus said at the right hand of the Father. But when I'm sitting there and I'm praying, one thing that I always pray is, God, show me my weaknesses. Because how many of you know, we all know our strengths. But it's hard to accept our weaknesses. I'm weak in this area. But I'm not above correction. See, but when you're an immature Christian, you take when the pastor says, and you ask him, help me, and he tries to help you, and you get angry. You're an immature Christian. And another thing I would say when I say that you're selfish, because when you think about it, when people get mad at correction, it's not so much that they get mad at the one correcting them, they get upset with their self. Oh my gosh, they've revealed my weakness. But see, people that are quick to anger, catch this, are, are, are sensitive to correction. One of the major qualities, a uh, character traits of a Christian is humility. Humility. See, think about this. When conflict or correction arises, if your first reaction is to become defensive, you're not maturing in your faith or in your walk with God. If you get angry. I, that's the one thing about our church and that leadership. If you're doing it wrong, I'm going to tell you, if you get angry, you shouldn't be in leadership start there. Because the thing is, we got to look and say, okay, that, I keep saying this, but I feel the Holy Spirit saying it. That worked, that didn't. There is things I would love to do with this church right now, but I know we're not capable of doing it. First off, we don't have enough people. Second off, we need major finances to do it. See, one thing that my pastor taught me, Dr. Pope, he said, Jonathan, you're trying to do 15 things good. He said, do five great. Catch that. Five great. Focus on, like, I'm 2022, I'm already looking at it. Five great. So we already know one of them's the gathering every year. Great. Next year, I believe the back to school bash needs to be bigger. Great. Think about it. We know two things. I'm not going to reveal the other three because I'm going to mess you up on them. But the thing is, we're going to do them great. But to have a great event, first off, we already got a great God. We got to have great people. But see, the thing is, when you need to ask yourself, see, here's, the <laughs> if I could teach you one thing tonight, let it be this. How much stock do you put in what certain people say? Amen. You ever had somebody come and say, well, so-and-so said this? And your first reaction is to get what? Angry. See, that was the first trait. 
immature. What you got to do is when you hear it before getting angry, ask yourself how much stock do you put in the person that's telling you? Mm Uh-huh. And then ask yourself the question, is it worth the fight? See, think about this. In other words, is there a great, I mean, if somebody comes up to you and says something, first off, it's kind of like me and Heather were talking one day. There is no way I could, I, I, I would even have an ounce of time to do something stupid. My life is so blessed. And the thing is, but you've got to put stock in it. Well, Pastor Jonathan said this. Who's the person bringing it to you? How much stock do you put in that person? There's a lot of times I'll hear somebody say, well, so-and-so said this about you. I just blow it off, man. Consider the source. I ain't got time for it because if I, if I ever react, I have to go to their standard of living, not my spiritual standard of living. Because I believe the Scripture said, does it not want to the person everyone speaks well of? People are going to talk about this church because we're different. People are going to talk about this church because we're not your average church. They don't like that we got the, the, the disco ball over there. They don't like that our lights are cut off. They don't like that, that we're getting out of the box. But see, the thing is, you got to, I still listen to my spirit, wish more people were here, maybe they'll listen to it this week. Is there a grain of truth to what the person is saying? How come it is you'll believe somebody that's lied to you before? Come on, am I talking to this church? You're going to put stock in what they said, and they, they'd rather climb a greasy light pole and tell a lie than stand on the ground and tell the truth. But you're going to put stock in what they're saying? How many times you ever had your granny say, they're an ounce of truth in them? You're with me? But how come it is? Okay, I'll say it. The reason you put stock in it is because you're not sensitive to correction. Well, I can't believe. See, we, but we got to look. Is it worth the fight? Think about it. See, if the answer is yes, in other words, you're like, well, so-and-so, okay, I got some stock in this person. Catch this. Work on improving yourself. If the answer is no, ignore it. Correction is a part of maturity. I will ask my pastor. I will ask people that I trust put stock in. Did you catch that? Somebody's closer to God than I am. And I'll say, what do you see? I ain't taking correction from nobody don't walk closer to God than I do. Mm-hmm. Remember, your attic's bigger than my closet. But you've got to ask yourself the question, do I put stock in what that person is saying? Do I believe that this person is telling me the truth? When people came up to me one time, and this is funny. This is really funny. Y'all get a a kick out of this. Somebody came up to me about a year ago and told me Heather was having an affair on me. Thought y'all would laugh. Thought that was funny. I didn't. I was like, really? When does she have time? She works. When she's not at work, she's at home. When she's not at home, she's either grocery shopping. Y'all been to Walmart. Ain't much stuff there to look at. But the thing is, but the thing, I didn't even put no stock in it. And the thing, the person said, well, did you find out? No, that, that's not even worth my time. Because I know her. Did y'all catch what I just said? Some of you, and I love you, those are here and those are listening to CRC TV, you sat here and you put stock in people that are ignorant. It's almost like you want to believe that what they're saying is true. You ever, <laughs> Brother Jeremy, think about that. Have you ever been to court with somebody? Nine out of ten, they'll say, innocent. How you plead? Innocent. And you know they're guilty. They ain't nobody ever walks up. Not very few. Maybe I'm just the only one that's ever. And very few. I'm guilty, judge. How much time do I have? No. And the thing is, if they walk in, the judge is already sitting there. He already knows nine times out of ten what he's going to do. I'm innocent, judge. And then kind of like what old uh, Ron White said, you got me. You got the tater. You know, think about it. Nobody wants to admit when they fall short. 
But guys, the thing is, that's humility. But I will share this with you also. Don't let people that are not as close to God as you know that you've fallen short. Because they will use it as artillery to destroy you. See, number three, this is a big one. Y'all know one of my favorite sayings, I love everybody, but I want very few people to go on vacation with me. Number three, and how come is you invite those people you don't like to go on vacation with? I don't understand that. Number three, they get on my nerves. But think about it. You, this is big. Number three of sp- in spiritual immaturity is you don't love your neighbor. Didn't say you had to hang out with them. Didn't say you had to be BFFs. But you don't love your neighbor. The Bible says this, how can you love God whom you have not seen and not, and love, and not love your brother whom you have seen? You have to love everybody. You can't get to heaven. Please listen to me. You can't get to heaven without loving everybody. You can love them. I love every one of my enemies. I love them. I love them. I'm a, like Romans says, I'm going to heap coals of fire on their head. But the thing is, I love everybody. But it doesn't mean I have to associate with them. Y'all need to listen to this. I love you, so I'm going to help you. I know this may sound immature, Sister Juanita, when I say this. You might say, Pastor, that's crazy. But believe it or not, there's people that check your friends on Facebook. And you're guilty by association. Think about it. I block people. But the thing is, when you say, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I'm going to accept their friends request. Are you really friends with them? Because people's going to look at your friend. I know this may sound you might just blow this one off, and that's fine. They're going to look at your friends on your Facebook, and they're going to say, hey, I thought they didn't get along. Or I thought this, delete them. I'll be straight up with you. I, I, Heather, I told Heather the other day I'm this close to just doing a spiritual cleansing of our, our whole Facebook and only have friends that go to this church and only have friends that most of the people on ours I work with or go to church with or I'm associated with them at work. You know, things like that are uh, uh, associated with them in ministry. But you might say, well, that's not a big thing. Yes, it is. Because if you, now think about this. Let's say someone brings an accusation up against Elder Barry. And we know it's false. And yet they're your friend on Facebook. Well, I thought they were standing with the Brother Barry. Am I, am I helping you? But here's the problem. Most people don't want to delete people off Facebook because they want to know their business, want to know what's going on with them, want to know what they're saying. Did you hear they said this about you? Who cares? Who cares? But see, you you have, I, like I said, I love everybody. So there's people I have to love from a distance, long distance. I mean, hallelujah. They don't have my phone number. Please, if somebody asks you for my phone number, don't give it to them. Ask me first. I'll ask you before I give yours. Because I'll be straight up, but there's some people I just don't want to talk to. I love them. I won't talk to you. See, it's easy to love people. This is so true. Gosh, I thought about people when I heard this one from the Holy Spirit. It's easy to love those who think and act the way you do. Oh, let me say that one more time. It's easy to love people who act and think like you do. Because, they're, believe it or not, you're looking at you when you look at them. Ooh. What is your attitude toward people who look, dress, and talk differently than you? What's your attitude? When, peop- when you see these people, let's say you see someone wearing something you would not wear. Who made you the fashion police? Come on now. Who made you the fashion police? Who said that the way they dress is wrong? They're probably looking at you and saying, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you something. You know I'm telling the truth. You know people like that. They're going to look at you. Well, okay, have you ever said somebody, ever heard somebody say, well, you don't act normal. Are you normal? Because if you're normal, I don't want to be normal. Am I helping you? I don't want to drive a boring vehicle. I don't want to wear boring clothes. I don't want to live a life of boring. I don't want our church to be blah. I don't want our church to have a steeple. 
every other one does. I want us to be different. But think about this. How are those who can, you can, okay. How about those who are considered poor are down on their luck? How do you treat them? How do you treat them? Here's what the problem with the church is, not ours. They deserve what they get. Okay, you deserve hell, but you had a Savior. You talk, have you ever stopped and talked to a person who was homeless? Have you ever stopped and talked to that guy that walks the streets of Elkins? I talked to him one day, and he told me, and I never will forget this, he said, I'm just looking for cans to get enough cans to, s- to do whatever they do with them, to sell them or whatever, to get food. I was thinking, dear gosh. But, you know, the thing is, if you talk to him, people, why is that talking to me? Nothing hurts my heart more, maybe it's just me, than to see the police talking to a homeless person. Because I know somebody has called in on them. They don't smell like you. They don't act like Talk to them. Believe it or not, Brother Jeremy and Marone, three out of five of them are veterans. Three out of five of them served your country, died, or was willing to die for your country. They deserve better. If we're going to take care of people, take care of our seniors, our widows, our orphans, and our vets. Take care of those four. We can take care of ourselves. Okay? But think about this. What's your first instinct when you, when you see someone that's poor or down on their luck? Do you show compassion? Or as I said a while ago, do you say they get what they deserve? Our church will never be that way. If it is, I won't be here. Somebody else will be. The person who walks through that door didn't come by accident. They came hunting for something. Nobody walks into a church just to walk in. There's something that's missing in their life. There's something that they need when they walk through the door. Do you realize, and I did a study of this in seminary, and it'll mess you up. Nine out of ten people that go to the door of a church never open it. Now, you miss that. They never open it because they they weasel their way out. They they don't want to open the door. But when that one person opens the door, they're looking for something. That's why first touch is so important. That's why Elder Barry is at that door and he opens that door. You ever had your hands full and wish somebody would have opened it? How many churches have you really been to in your lifetime where somebody's at the door to open it? The thing is, if they're out there, and someone opens the door, there's nothing to stop them from coming in. You have to show people, just because they don't look like you, just because they don't act like you, doesn't mean that the way they are doing or acting is wrong. It's just who they are. I couldn't imagine some of you, and I'm going to be nice because I won't point nobody out, but I, I, would, it would, I would be brokenhearted if some of you didn't come in the way you truthfully are. God, please don't change yourself. If y'all was to walk in here with dresses, I'd say, wrong church. I said, oh, no, no. Get your, you know, get on out of here. This ain't you. What happened? Somebody die? Oh, I just, you know, no. Why well, if I walk in here with a suit, y'all go crazy. Look, I got to do a funeral. Things worked out with the baptizing. I got to do a funeral Sunday at 2.30. I'm all, I'm doing a I'm 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 gonna be it doing the service at a African American funeral home. So guess what? Long coat, alligator shoes. That's gonna be dressed from head to toe. Couldn't get my orange one quick enough, so I'm gonna have to go to electric blue or lime. I think we'll go to lime green this time. Cause they're they're ca- they're Spencer's funeral home. What color is the is the hearse, brother? Lime green. I told that guy, I told the owner of that place, Mr. Spencer, I said, I, I, right now I'm not scheduled to come to your funeral home. 
Well, how much would you charge the funeral home that I'm going to be at, which is Gentry's, how much would you charge them to borrow your hearse? He said, for who? I said, for me. He said, oh, not a dime, brother. I said, well, you put that in writing because they ain't going to ride me around in no white Cadillac hearse. They're going to be, I, I just hit a button or hydraulics just to let people know who it is. Matter of fact, fire all of Gentry, just use Gentry's funeral home and bring everybody from Spencer's down. Hallelujah. But the thing is, though, is, but the, we, just because people look different doesn't mean anything. See, think about this. I got, I got nine minutes. The Bible is clear. If you don't love your brother, the love of God's not in you. Love is action. When I hear somebody tell me I love you, a lot of times I hear just words. Love is what y'all did tonight that you think I didn't notice. Love is, I had <laughs> tell y'all this is kind of cute, and I know they're going to be watching YouTube uh, tonight after the service, but I got a phone call from one of the nurses. And what I tell y'all, do y'all remember I said, just give me a cherry cheesecake and I'm good? Evidently, they watched the Facebook Live. So they called me and they said, Where, what you going to be doing tomorrow around 3.30? I had a patient up in that area. They said, um, I said, well, I'm going to be up there. And they said, well, stop by the house, which their house was about a half a mile. When I got there, they said, happy birthday. Cherry cheesecake. The crust was homemade. Mm. And the center are, are the things around it. Y'all know what I'm talking about, like a pie crust? Golly, Bill, with vanilla wafers. That thing was that thick. But the funny thing is, they said, well, I hope you enjoyed your cake. They left. They kept the rest of it. I didn't get to bring it home. Hallelujah. I was like, hey, hey, babe, they made me a cherry cheesecake. Boy, it was good. Where's my piece? <laughs> In Lambsburg, Virginia. That's where it's at. But the thing is, that's love. When you love someone, I'm, I'm not talking about being in love, because that's, that's, that's a different definition. But when you love someone, you strive to make them happy. But see, the thing is, if you don't love your brother, you don't have the love of God. Work to meet the needs of those around you, regardless of others' background or economic status. And I'm going to stop on three. But the thing is, you have to love your neighbor. You have to. I mean, it, the people that, ha and, and, and I, I don't like harking on this, and I told myself it would be different, but the people that have hurt me, you, our church, we still love them. We love them. I mean, I pray for the best for them. I pray God takes them and uses them because I have to love. But love don't mean I have to be abused to give. Love doesn't mean that I have to be used again. Love doesn't mean, when you come to City of Refuge, I will say this, there is nobody that has ever left City of Refuge has left because we didn't love them. They left because of their own personal agenda, preference, or whatever. But we have to show the love of God. If The Bible even tells us if our brother asks us to go one mile with them, we go two. If our brother asks for a cloak or a coat, give them two. If you ha the thing is, that's the love of God. And the thing that we have to understand, guys, it's just like our church. We have to love people in spite of their sexual preference, in spite of where they live. I'm going to tell you something. So I was thinking about this when I was, I was talking to Heather about my, my next tattoo. And, and yeah, I said, my next. I told you, it's contagious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when I sat here thinking, I was like, you know, some of the most judgmental people I've ever met wear suits and dresses. The most loving people I've ever met have tattoos. I won't, Heather's going to make me a shirt. Even Jesus has a tattoo. But the thing is, is but think about this. You know it's the truth. If you see somebody, cause, okay, let's use one. Brother Jeremy going to mess people up. We see a person with a tattoo of a teardrop. First thing we talk, think is they killed somebody. What if it's this tear that they shed for the patient, the family member they loved? Uh-huh. 
See how things can get blown out of context? Why they got that tattoo? I'm going to tell you something. This is my temple. I ain't going to have a born outside. Uh Uh-uh. That's not me. That's not me. This is my temple. And yes, people say, well, you used to put, you know, I ain't going to get into all that. But the thing is, is it's my preference. But what makes it wrong? Amen. It's kind of like what I tell people all the time. When I see, if we can ever get past this, never, never stereotype somebody based on their outward. Get to know the person. Get to know the person. People have asked me all the time, and, and it's one of those things that I think is so funny, it's so ignorant of people. And they'll make a statement, they'll say, they'll say this, they'll be like, well, how would you feel about this situation? Or how would you feel about that situation? First off, I'm not in that situation. How can we answer what we would do if we've never been there? Now, I can help you on a lot of things in life. But there's a lot of things some of you have been through that I haven't been through. I don't know what you're going through. I do know, and I challenge all the young people in our church, to the importance of finding a boyfriend or girlfriend that will go to church with you. That is so big. Because if they'll go to church with you, and they will pray with you. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't do the test, pray with you. That will pray with you. That'll re- when me and Heather first started dating, the first thing that I, was, I started hearing was things in our past. Well, people were really jealous. And we, I'm, if y'all wasn't there, you'll never understand it. But people did not like. Heather and I really truthfully come from two different sides of the track. Okay. Here I am, Pope John Paul II. You know. Here I am, didn't even watch movies till I was 19, and the first one was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Didn't, ne- you know, never. But see, the thing is, I fell in love with the Heather I knew. I could care less about the Heather she was. People that are always throwing up your past are jealous of your present and future. If people, think about it, people you've dated, the people that you was married to because you didn't listen to God, when you're happy, why can't, why are you with that person? I thought, you know, uh uh-uh. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to enjoy life. You know, the Apostle Paul, a lot of the preachers preach that the Apostle Paul was never married. That's garbage. The Apostle Paul's wife died at a very young age. So when the Apostle Paul said, it's better for you to marry than to burn, he said, I would that you be as I am. Because he was married to the gospel. He was married to his purpose. But he said, if you can't, marry. Because then you won't fall into those temptations. I watched the movie last night. We're going to pray. I watched Fireproof again last night. Don't know why. I was just wanting to watch Fireproof. And the lady made a point. And I want to teach on this one Wednesday night, but I don't know when the Holy Spirit will let me. If you remember in the movie, her husband battled a porn addiction. Matter of fact, we're, getting, we're going to have a movie night. Go ahead and tell you all right now. The last we, uh, last one of the last week, last weeks, uh, the last days of the month of September, we're gonna try to have a movie night. We gonna we got a TV, might as well enjoy it. But uh, two, if you want to sit here, right, if you want to sit there, you can do them both ways, you know. But remember, this is a sacred place. But but uh, she said she looked at him and she made a statement: "Am I not enough for you?" And when she said that, I had to pause the movie. Think about how deep that is. If you're listening to me on CORC TV tonight, 
if you're married and you look at another person as to lust upon them, your spouse wasn't enough for you. Spiritually, if you have to dabble in sin to get satisfaction, his death, burial, and resurrection wasn't enough for you. But Sister Tammy, when she said that, and I've watched that movie, golly, Bill, Heather and I, we didn't have cable back when we first got married. We had a DVD player. I'll know every word to how the Grinch stole Christmas because we didn't have no cable. We were poor. We, we lived in a, ch- in a house on Old Virginia Road. Y'all can look at it, take your kids, 184 Old Virginia Road. We, we walked, was walking into, and on the porch to get from going to church, and the porch fell through. But, we, but, that, but the thing is, we watched that movie, but when I watched that last night, that is so real. So the thing I always ask God to do is our men in this church, the women in this church, God put blinders on them. Because every time you, dab into, you dabble with sin or you look at another person and you're in covenant marriage, you're saying God's not enough or that person's not enough. That's what I want to leave you with tonight because I think that's so deep. When she said that, am I not enough for you? Every time you sin, I pray you hear the Holy Spirit saying, or Jesus saying, Am I not enough for you? Mm -hmm. Every time you get ready to do something sinful, and you know, because the Bible says if you willfully sin, there's no more remission of that sin, which means you're going to stand before God, weighed in the balance. And you better hope that the scales don't don't tip to wrong. Because the Bible said, and I'm going to say this, God's coming after a church without spot or blemish. But the next time, I feel that so strong. I, I might be what the, the thing that I use for my 47th year of living. Am I not enough for you? Think about it. But tonight, I want to thank every one of you for being here. Make sure you stay and eat some cake. If it's not for anybody but for me. But do be praying for those folks in our, that are not here tonight. Uh, I know that Sister Tina said she had to work. Love that kid. Boy, after my heart. Oh, yes. Is that what y'all shared with me? Please do, guys. Please do. Because I'll be straight up with you. She's a teenager, right? Am I right when I say that? Young. Um, be praying. I, I found out um, Wilk Central's not playing this weekend because of COVID protocol. Um, I know East is was playing Surrey Central. Elkins traveling to Miller's Creek for a scrimmage. That's all I'm going to say about that. Supposed to be a varsity football game. I don't think it's going to be. But um, and then be praying for the young folk in with Satoma and the middle school. I know Elkin goes to play Jonesville Saturday night. It's going to be hard for me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm big old. I'm still a Blue Jay. Hallelujah. I coached them. I coached over there. So, uh, but but definitely, guys, be praying. Um, be praying for our kids especially in school, I'm telling you. I found out, I don't know about how it was with you, but boy, my my spirit was tested Monday taking Madison to school at Elkin Elementary. Boy, that parking, that daggone line testing my faith, testing my patience. I found out if I get there between 715 and 720, I, don't have, I can be there at Rattledge. I got there at 740 because she wanted to ride the bus, which did not happen. And I got there about 7:45. That was an adventure. I was on the line. I was on the old 268, all the way down to the wreck. So, uh, but be praying for our kids. Pray for safety of our kids, not just our kids, but all kids. Um, because, guys, my daughter Sierra told me today when she called me this morning, she said at Hugh Chatham alone, 
they have no more ventilators, that there's people in the ICU unit that really truthfully doesn't need the ventilator. And there's 40-year-old people in their, I guess they're quarantined with a quarantine, or uh, yeah, quarantined, that need it but can't get it. You're not hearing this on the news, but there is people. She said the hospital was full at Hugh Chatham. Um, I'm sure they're everywhere else too, but but when she told me that, she said, Daddy, she said, I don't understand. But the thing is, I'll be straight up with you, if that was my parent on that ventilator, I'd not be hard for me to say, take it off, of, take my parent off of it and put it on somebody else. But, but be praying. God's been good to our church. I don't think nobody in the past year in our church has tested positive for COVID. I know we've had some scares, uh, but I don't think nobody has. And I will tell you, please respect others. If you find out someone has come, you don't have to say the name. You can tell me if you want to, but this stays between us. But if somebody's tested positive, I do need to know it because I need to figure out what we need to do as a church. Now that we've got CORCC TV, we can, Brother Bo and I, if we have to, we can come over here if we ever have to do something like that. Uh, the church has Venmo. I don't know if y'all know what Venmo is, but we have Venmo now. Uh, if we don't have service and you want to give your tithes and offerings through Venmo, which I, we're not, I'm not saying we're going to, not going to, but just possibility. Uh, you can do it that way. But we are going to be, we are going to be safe. Um, I do know that there's some pastors that have been talking about their churches possibly shutting down. Our church will not shut down. We will, we will use protocol and things like that. But uh, please respect me and respect this church. That's why the girls are not here tonight. I'll be straight up with you. They're not here. I know Madison, Alice is okay. She ran around, around at the house, and, but Al, Madison went to the doctor. She was tested today. The test came back negative, but they're supposed to call me tomorrow for confirmation. I love you enough that my child will not be here. Trust me, Heather wanted to be here. The kids, the kids wanted to be here. But, you know, I'm not like them other pastors y'all been under. If your kid's sick, stay at home with your child. Watch the service after we post it. Now, don't get make that a habit, you know what I'm saying? We love you enough to have you here. But, uh, Brother Bo, if you will, hit me. Let's put up the upcoming events. Don't forget, guys. And you might, I'm going to tell you, if we say this enough, you won't forget it. Now, I, somebody said, well, I forgot we was doing that. How in the world do you forget it? We do it every <laughs> service. Um, First Lady will be teaching the 19th at 10 a.m., Guys, she's gonna bring a word. SNL, uh, Saturday, September night or Sunday, September nineteenth at six p.m. Also, um, Heather nailed me on this. So Sunday we're gonna have a meeting about it. Don't get in no hurry, because she said we're gonna do it good. I hope maybe we sure are. Hallelujah! But our she take. I'm telling you, she's been talking about this all year. I'm telling you, this is big. Uh, but could you imagine the church having something like that in the future? But October 30th at 5 p.m. will be our haunted house and trick-or-treating. Kids will be coming here for trick-or-treating. Um, then we got this one, guys, the gathering. Um, it's going to be big, so I'm, we're going to be talking about that Sunday, too. And then we have our women's conference, December 4th, 10 a.m. Uh, brother Bo, you're going to have to put a T beside that S, brother. But December 4th at 10 a.m. at 2 a.m., First Lady Heather will be pre uh, teaching. Dr. Christy Pope will be teaching the 2 p.m. session. Uh, Sister Erica McKinney will be, uh, will be leading praise and worship. Then I don't know if we have this one on here, Brother Bo, but I know you'll fix it. You're the man. December 5th, 10 a.m., Dr. Christy Pope will be with us again. She will be preaching during our 10 a.m. Sunday morning celebration service. And Sister Erica McKinney will be leading praise and worship. That is December 5th, and I think that's all we have Nope, lights, camera, Christmas. Boy, you, Juanita, you should have threw something at me. Uh, reason we did not have practice Monday night, this young lady did not feel good. And, and she had a terrible migraine. Um, Heather was like, here's what Heather's like, that's Juanita's baby. She knows what she wants. I don't. We'll do it next Monday. So lights, camera, Christmas, December 19th at 6 p.m., that will also be a night, if we can, guys, that night we will try to have the Wednesday, help me on this one, Sister Christy, 
the Wednesday before Christmas, well, one day before Christmas, a Saturday before Christmas. Let me know what the Saturday before Christmas is. Yes. Right there is a lady to talk to. She, she's the boss. But uh, the Saturday before Christmas, the Saturday before Christmas, we will be having a church Christmas dinner. Now, I don't, I want us to, if, if we can, I'd love for us to go somewhere to eat together. So uh, that'll be the Saturday before Christmas. Then don't forget Wednesday night power hour every Wednesday night, Sunday morning celebration every Sunday at 10 a.m. And then breaking the chains, Heather will let us know about that also at 7 p.m. So December 18th, we'll be putting that down to church Christmas dinner. Uh, and then I will say this, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, we will be, I'd love for our church to get together and put our Christmas trees up. So we'll look at that the Sunday after Christmas, after Thanksgiving. Um, I'd like to get some poinsettias and things, guys, kind of set this place up for Christmas. But do not forget, guys, stay with us and eat some cookie cake, um, I want to thank you all for all that you've done for me for my birthday. It's it's been a, it's been a great day. I told somebody, Sister Rita, and people think I'm funny, but I said I got to do what I, what I love doing for my birthday. I got to serve others. So, uh, but thank you all, guys. I can't thank you enough for for the gifts that you that you've given. Um, got home last night. The baby said, "Daddy, we got you something." They had me a carrot cake. They had me a carrot cake at the house. I've got. Chocolate pie at the house. Gracie had to help me. I can't remember what. I mean, and they tell me I need to lose weight. How in the name of the good Lord can you lose weight? That ain't mine. That's Samantha's. Well, she can eat that. But I don't either. But, but anyway, don't, uh, but enjoy it, guys. Make sure that you take time to wish Junior and Brother Sean, I know he's working tonight. Wish him happy birthday. Juanita's will be Friday. You better take care of Juanita dying here soon. I better hear Sunday that you took care of that lady. She's going to be 19 all over again. But, uh, and I think, am I right? Who is there, Am I right? Is that the only birthdays we have after the 27th? Okay. Well, listen, guys, God bless you. I love you. We're going to cut the lights on, get you some cake. And let's have a little bit of fellowship before we all go home. God bless you. I love you. See you Sunday.